thank you everybody for taking the time to join us today. So this is the second UK webinar of the series. Um, there will be some additional webinars in the coming weeks, so please keep a lookout for those. But today we're going to be focusing on electric vehicle fleet management solutions uh, from Geotab. For the agenda, Okay, so for those that may be new to Geotab or are not too familiar with the company, I'm just going to go through a brief overview of who we are. So we are a world leader in connected vehicles, an engineering company, and specifically experts in data analytics, data insights, and fleet management. We started in North America in the year 2000, and we've since grown rapidly since then. And we do pride ourselves on having a reseller model, so we don't sell direct in Europe. And we also have what we call a marketplace, marketplace partners, where we can specifically add value to the offering that we provide to our customers. We have over 1,200 employees. I think that's more like 1,500, 600 now. And we have a global footprint of offices all over the world, including one in London in the UK. And finally, we do have over 2 million connected vehicles globally, and therefore would consider ourselves one of the largest fleet management companies in the world. Okay, thanks Joshua. So what I wanted to talk you through today is why UK businesses are choosing Geotab, in particular those looking to transition from ICE vehicles to EVs. On this slide, you can see the telematics market has moved on from the dot and the map solution of 10, 20 years ago, and people are expecting much more from their telematics provider. Here's where Geotab comes in, because we can tell from our data that fleet operators today are wanting to measure the following. The current driving styles within their fleet, they want to measure driver improvements by monitoring their behavior. They want to reduce the fuel cost, as it's often one of the biggest, if not the biggest cost to any company. They are wanting to measure the distances covered on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, as this helps them plan better for the future. And finally, our resellers are telling us that nearly all of their new customers are talking about EVs and how they're wanting to transition from their ICE vehicles across to EVs in the coming months or years to come. And that's where the EBSA comes in. So on this slide, we can see a list of customers that have gone through this already with our resellers. Muller Milk and Moore is an interesting company because in their history, they've gone from a fully electric fleet, transitioned across to mainly ICE vehicles within the fleet, and now they're transitioning back to full EVs. This process was made possible by utilising Geotab's EBSA and working with our reseller here in the UK. Nearly all of the companies you see on this slide have made a decision to move to Geotab from their incumbent supplier because of all the benefits of our EV solution. So again, looking through the data that we, we collect, we can see that the EV fleets are now using geotabs from measuring the events more closely, uh, the driving events, such as speed and acceleration, to improve the range of the battery on the EV vehicles. If we look at Farm Dropper as an example, they've achieved 27% more range by reducing these driving events. They're using it to check the state of charge during uh, specific trips to make sure that there's enough range capable for the remainder of that journey. They will check to measure the vehicles uh, are put on charge at night when they're in the depots, or even actually how much power has been put into the vehicle at the driver's homes so they can reimburse the staff uh, more accurately. Still looking to improve driver behavior uh, to save money on tires and brakes because there's less parts to go wrong in an EV vehicle. So these are, are the two items that become most costly. Uh, believe it or not, delivery companies um, that we saw on the previous page, they're looking to ensure their drivers are taking the keys out when making a delivery, as historically, theft has been a big issue for those companies. All of the above is available for any of our resellers, but the customers and the data you've seen so far on EVs comes from Geotab's European EV Reseller of the Year in Level Telematics. They've made great progress within the EV market and are responsible for nearly all of our UK EV customers. You've heard me mention a few times already about the EBSA, so now I'm going to pass you back to Joshua, who will tell you more about that. So what you see on the screen is the electrification chart, basically from 0% to 100% electric, how fleets switch to electric vehicles these days. So we do provide solutions for, for fleets with 0% electric vehicles in the slide, in, in their process. This is the Go Electric um, solution for us, the EVSA, the so-called Electric Vehicle Suitability, Suitability Assessment. We're going to talk about this later on. And if you have already have electric vehicles in your fleet, then uh, Operate Electric 
or my Toyota V features is for you there. This will help you to utilize your electric vehicles the best way with the telematic system. So this will be the two main topics for today. Let's start with going electric in the EVSA. So who are, who are the mandates for this one? Uh, this could be interesting for anyone who considers employing or utilizing electric vehicles in their fleet. Usually fleets these days don't go directly 100% electric. Usually they start with a small amount and you get more and more vehicles in your fleet until you get to, to a healthy balance there. Because still today, most of the fleet has demands that are not 100% coverable with electric vehicles. Usually you arrive to mixed fleets at the end. So this EV adoption and carbon reduction and operational cost reduction, they are important for, for every fleet these days as well. So all groups there, or main groups are government utilities, delivery and service vehicles, electric utilities, and all the other fleets who are operating in either a mixed fleet or a clear EV fleet. So what are the key benefits of the EV? Fleet managers who, who think about buying electric vehicles, they, they usually face the same questions there. And our goal was to find out these questions, these issues there, and to help provide solutions for that one, to help re uh, answer these questions the best as possible. So the first problem is usually you don't always have the time to research all the EV models that are available to your market, which are the EVs that are actually there that you can buy. That's why we help you as a first step to show you, okay, these are the, the EVs that are in your local market. The other point, we all know that the, the official figures for, for consumption or the range are not always the same that you see in real time, real life. That's why on, in the EVSA, we try to show you the real life data based on the vehicles in our fleet as well, or in your database as well. But most of the time, it's tailor-made to your uh, use case, but can be that you have some different, uh, different aspect that you're interested in. Then the tool gives you the option to download the raw simulated data and uh, compare other EVs and use it the way to get a recommendation tailored to you them. So the, what's the EVSA? The EV is an EV procurement tool. As mentioned, it helps you to find out which of your vehicles in your fleet would be available for to be replaced with an electric vehicle and which electric vehicle would be the best fit for them. The main aspects for, the, for this analysis, we are taking telematics data. By using telematics data, we can analyze your fleet's performance in the last few months. At least one month of data is usually recommended, but we can analyze up to a year of telematics data. All the trips your vehicle was, was driven on, all the fuel consumption that it has over, over the time. And based on that real life telematics data, we can do the analysis of, of any electric vehicles whether it be battery electric or uh, plug-in hybrid vehicles could be, could be a good fit for, for that given vehicle. And for that one, the first important would be the range assurance. So we need to make sure that the EV can do the job there because the worst thing that can happen that your driver gets stranded on the side of the road because then your cost will, will skyrocket in. Other thing is it has to, has to make sense financially as well because TCO is an important question there. And of course, the environmental impact. These are the main factors for, for the EVSA. Range assurance, that's the one that I just, just mentioned. The EV has to meet the range requirements even in the worst conditions possible. We all heard about how the range fluctuates over the year and over different conditions. We make sure that, that the EV can the job done. Financial analysis, when switching from internal combustion engine vehicles to, to electric vehicles, your cost structure will be different. Usually the procurement costs are, are higher with some government subsidies that can be reduced, but generally they are higher than with internal combustion vehicles. But your maintenance costs are usually lower. EVs last longer with uh, less maintenance costs than combustion engines. That's of course a bit generalization, but that's that's usually true. You don't have the regular oil changes and all the other maintenance costs are reduced with EVs as well. Of course, your fuel costs will be lower if you switch to an electrified fleet, but there is a new cost factor, which is the electricity. So it uh, really depends from country to country how the electricity prices are or if different electricity prices are available for you depending on the day rate and if you charge your vehicles at home if, or at your depots or at the office or on a public chargers. So this cost can vary really, really on a high level but this is a new cost factor. And of course, the other factors that could include tax benefits that could include other governmental subsidies as well. So your TCO will be different, but we can give you a good estimate what you can expect if you procure the EVs that we talk about it.
And of course, environmental impact these days more and more important as well. Since you are using less fuel in your fleet, that means less local environmental impact, less local emissions. We can also show you your CO2 potential, CO2 sparing potential by switching electric as well. It's based on the fuel consumption. As I mentioned earlier, we are analyzing the fuel consumption of your current fleet. And by switching to EVs, we can also calculate how the fuel consumption and the CO2 consumption or the emission will look like that. So let's take a look how the EVSC works in the practice. So it's part of the MyGeota database. It's available as an add-in. And if you have the Go device included in your, in, installed in your system, using telematics data can, can give you this analysis there. The analysis itself is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. It takes a few minutes to, to click through the steps. Of course, the more data you add to the system, you, the more suited for your use case the, the end results will be. So first of all, you need to select your country there. The importance of the country is that uh, you will get the available EVs for your country. And of course, this will also change the, the country defaults in that way. So for example, for the UK, that will be pounds. For Europe, that will be, that will be euro. And uh, it will also change the different temperature defaults for that country. As mentioned earlier, temperature has a, has a high factor of, of your available or the achievable EV range. And that's why we always calculate with different temperature ranges for each and every country. You will get a default here. If you'd say you are, you are operating in a different area of your country where the temperatures are different, please change it according to your, to your position because then you get a better recommendation based on the, what is the range. As mentioned earlier, we always make sure that the EV can get the job done. That's why we always calculate with the worst case scenario there. Then you can select how long the time period for the comparison will be. That means we will calculate uh, or we will take this amount of telematics data into consideration. If your fleet has the same usage pattern all over the year, then you can, you can get by with a smaller period. If you have high seasonal fluctuation or with the current COVID situation, that's also of course a different situation as, as normally, then a longer time horizon is, is um, recommended in order to get the, the correct values at the end. Then you can select which vehicles you would like to consider as replacing. The concept behind the EVSA is that, that we can compare the usage of new electric vehicles or the procurement of new electric vehicles and the procurement of new non-electric vehicles with your current fleet. We do have three vehicle categories currently in the system. We do have electric passenger vehicles. We do have electric SUVs or crossovers. And we also have the electric small vans in the system there. So you can select which of your vehicles are considered to be part of this vehicle category, the other vehicle category, or the third vehicle category. And if you select the vehicles to compare, you will automatically guess, get the list of available EVs in your respective country. You can also set your preferences there. So you will get a list of dozen passenger vehicles there. And if you, for example, prefer some brand for the other, you can just turn on and off those uh, vehicles in the comparison. And then you get also uh, a price set by default. And these prices are usually MSRP prices. They are just the default price. As mentioned earlier, the better the data that you, that you input, the better the, your, your results will be. So you can change all the data points that, that you see here for the comparison as well. So if the procurement cost for a given vehicle is lower, and your maintenance costs are lower because you have a maintenance contract, for example, with one of the one of the OEMs, then you can change your values and then the analysis will get you more tailored data at the end. You can also calculate your average electricity price here. This will be used for TCO calculations. And you can do the same for passenger vehicles, SUVs, and, and vans if you have the list here. And this will be the main input for, for the analysis, apart from your telepathics data. Also, we would need a generic non-EV vehicle to do the comparison with. This will help you to decide if, if it would make sense to buy an EV or, or a non-EV on a long run. Here you can set the average fuel price. You will get the same values that you can change for these generic vehicles too. This will mostly use for the TCO calculation. And of course, a really important factor, especially if you're talking about UK, we can also calculate with different extra costs. So like 
the long -term toll, for example, you can add it as well. You can calculate if, if I will buy an EV or a, a non-EV van that will I will use in London City, then I need to calculate that I will have to pay some such charges, which I wouldn't have to pay if, if I would buy EVs. And afterwards, this is it basically. So if you really just want to get a quick snapshot, you can just click through this one without changing any, any data and you will get an analysis there. If you input some more uh, data points, which is true for your own uh, use case there, then you will get a more tailored recommendation. You can also set if you would like to buy those uh, new vehicles or if you think about leasing those vehicles, in what conditions, how long do we, uh, you would uh, consider keeping them, and this will create the analysis. Afterwards, after you input all the data, you can just click OK, and the system will start calculating the results. Depending on the vehicle amount, you will it will take from a few minutes until maximum an hour, but to really get it crunching the numbers for an hour, you would need a few thousand vehicles in the analysis. So usually just grab a coffee and then a few minutes later, you will get the analysis or the results of the analysis from the system. Let's take a look how the results look like. So this is an exa example here. We have analyzed 37 vehicles. And from these 37 vehicles, we can actually recommend you 23 EV replacements. So 23 of these can be replaced with battery electric vehicles and seven other can be replaced with plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So it looks like and for seven we don't have an EV fit. That's usually based first, it based on range assurance. So for 23 vehicles, the, the longest trip driven in the last time period was sh uh, shorter than the range capabilities of some EVs. So that means a battery electric vehicle could make sense there and also the TCO savings are, are in favor for the battery electric vehicles. That's why we can recommend those. For the seven vehicles that we recommend a plug-in hybrid vehicle, that's because there the range requirements can be uh, satisfied with, with a battery electric vehicle. But a plug-in hybrid vehicle, because of the, of the better fuel economy, it makes it a good choice there. And for seven vehicles, it doesn't make sense to switch to EV. We would say, let's switch to a new combustion vehicle or keep your all, keep your all combustion vehicle if you would like to get the best TCO possible. You can also have the option to tweak the results of the analysis at the end. So for example, you have the option to prefer battery electric vehicle. So in case both a battery electric vehicle and the plug-in hybrid vehicle would uh, work, they could do, both do the job. You can say, I would prefer battery electric vehicles whenever it's possible. You can also select EV premium. That means, yeah, I understand that over the seven years of, of this procurement, maybe my cost will be like a thousand bucks higher if I would buy a non-electric vehicle than an EV, but by considering all the other factors like daytime charging, as mentioned earlier, we really want to make sure that the EV can get the job done. But if you, if you say, I would like to get some flexibility in the recommendation, that means one or twice per month, I'm willing to, to charge the, the vehicle over the day or maybe take another vehicle for the trip, then the range recommendation will only consider the other 28 days of the month or 29 days of the month. And for that one, you can get a higher amount of recommended vehicles at the end. This is what we have here on the slide. So you can always go back and tweak all the input data there. So we say, yeah, okay, now I get uh, other information about the price information of given EVs. You can just change it back and the analysis will give you uh, the new breakdown values. And first of all, you will get a nice graphic recommendation of or a graphic summary of your lifetime savings over, over the, the period that you set earlier. You will see how your cost structure will, will work out. In this example, it's uh, similar to one I, I showed you earlier. That means your procurement costs will be higher if you go with EVs, but your maintenance costs will be lower and your fuel and electricity costs will also be lower. And on the long run, you spare, in this example, $180,000 by switching or following the recommendation of, of, the, of the EVSA. Also, then you get the, the different details of that one. So that one is, for example, for the fuel and electricity summary. This will show you how your fuel and EV usage will look like if you if you follow the recommendations, or how your fuel usage will look like if you don't follow the recommendations, but rather replace all your current non-EV vehicles with other internal combustion vehicles. And you will also see the, your current fleet fuel consumption or fuel costs over the time period as well. This is analog to this one because one liter of fuel is, is a given amount of CO2 emissions there as well. So you will get the same charts for, for CO2. So by following the recommendation, you will get your 
annual CO2 emissions from 48 tons down to 12 tons. So there is some significant reduction there. And apart from having the summarized values, you will also get one by one comparison between for each and every vehicle. So for example, the Beige Beast can be replaced with a 2019 Hyundai Ioniq. You don't have to charge it over the months because the highest trip of the Beige Beast was 100 20 miles over this six month of period that we that we analyzed and this is below the range of the Hyundai Ioniq even under extreme conditions so this EV will get the job done for sure and your lifetime cost will be reduced if you switch this vehicle to this electric vehicle. You can also have the option to see the detailed uh, simulation data there so if there is another vehicle which which could do the job just like the Ioniq this will also be recommended there as well. So that was going electric. The second part of it is operating electric. So, okay, you bought, bought a few EVs, you have maybe a few percent of electric vehicles in your fleet. How can you make sure that you are maximizing the usage of those vehicles and you're utilizing them the best way possible? And that's a question there actually that, that I, I usually ask. Do you think that EVs has to be handled differently than your other vehicles or they have to be handled the same way? And well, the answer that we usually give is that it depends. Because in some regards, EVs has to be handled similarly because they are vehicles there. So if you are talking about driver behavior, for example, if you talk about the safety of your drivers, they are just like any other non-combustion vehicles. But sometimes they also need to be handled differently because they have different capabilities and different challenges as, as internal combustion vehicles. Just think about the time it takes to refuel an EV and the limited range requirement. But of course, they also have some, some advantages on the other side, like the lack of tailpipe emissions. But we found out that most importantly, the EVs has to be handled together with combustion vehicles as well, because nobody wants to use two different telematic systems to manage your vehicles based on if they are a diesel vehicle or if they are an electric vehicle. That's why the idea behind Geotab was that we tried to integrate EVs as best as possible to our, our telematic system. And getting this data out of the vehicles is not trivial because EVs don't have to follow the same emission standards as combustion vehicles do. That's why we don't have the OBD standard there. Some of them don't even have the OBD connector on board. And that's why getting the relevant data out of the electric vehicles requires reverse engineering and advanced automotive know-how. And right now we support more than 50 vehicles there where we can get state of charge, when we can get the, the current and voltage of the high voltage battery, we get charging information, we get charging energy and drive energy. And based on that one, we can integrate the EVs completely to the telematic system, just like any other vehicles there. So by comparing fuel consumption, you can also compare electricity consumption. So first of all, you will get, of course, the raw data that we can read out of the vehicles, either through our Go device that was shown earlier or through the OEM's own systems there. But the raw data is usually not what, what you need. We do have some customers that are happy to, to use this raw data. They can directly integrate it to their own system. But we also went a step further. Instead of just showing the raw data, we try to show you insights and have you utilize your fleet as best as possible. So apart from raw data, we also develop these this functions that can be utilized there. So for example, you can compare fuel and energy consumed. In, in the system, in the same same uh, page, basically, just like you have fuel consumption for your internal combustion vehicles, you will get energy consumption for your electric vehicles. And this help you helps you, for example, to see if your plug-in hybrid vehicles are utilized uh, in the right way. So we just a few days ago analyzed two Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid vehicles there, and one of them was used as a plug-in hybrid. So it was charged every night and then driven like 30 kilometers per day maximum with eventual longer trips. So over a few months, the fuel consumption was below five liter, I think, for this SUV class vehicle. And the other one was used like a combustion engine vehicle. So never plugged in, can be that the charging cable is still in its original packaging there. And we checked the fuel consumption at the end of the day, it was 13 liters for the same vehicle. So you get more than the double of the fuel consumption based on how you use that vehicle. Here, by using this, this view, you can easily see which of your vehicles are utilized the right way. Also, you will get a complete charging history for the vehicles there. 
when, where, how long, how much electricity was charged to the vehicle, and how it was exactly used. That's important because as mentioned earlier, electricity prices highly fluctuate. So it's true for, for a few cost as well, but then usually you have maximum, like it really depends on from country to country, but you hardly get more than 50% difference. So if you fuel up in a cheaper fuel station or you fuel up right next to the highway, you pay like 50% more or maybe 80% more. By electricity, you can have 700% more. So if you charge it up, charge your vehicles at home during the night from, from midnight to three o'clock, you, you pay a few cents. If you use a high power DC charging over the highway, like the Unity network, you will ch pay like almost a euro for a kilowatt hour, which is a, so much higher prices, of course. That's why charging history is important. And you can also see the so-called charging behavior of your vehicles. And the other thing is if you will also get a real time view, which can be used for disposition. So you will always see the state of charge of your vehicles. You will see where they are located. You can always find out which vehicle would be the best to do the job there. Because as mentioned earlier, running out of charge during the day can get expensive pretty quickly because you can't just fill up with, with a five liter canister right on the roadside. You have to, in a worst case, you have to get get a trailer and get the vehicle towed to, to the nearest charging station. You have to utilize another vehicle to take over the job. And of course, you will always, always have to calculate not meeting customer expectations there as well. That's a real-time status that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So this is the real map view in the system. By electric vehicles, you will always see the current up-to-date state of charge. If the vehicle is charging, you will also see a charging indicator there. And this will help you to get a quick view about the current situation. Also, this is the fuel and EV energy usage report I mentioned earlier. It's for uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. You will see the fuel usage and then we are calculating MPGs based on that one. For plug-in hybrid vehicles, we get both fuel sources. Basically, so you will see the fuel used and the electricity used. And from these two, we can calculate the MPG equivalent. All of these units are completely uh, customizable. So if you prefer to have kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer instead of uh, electric MPGs, you can switch it over. It really depends on your own taste and own use case. And for electric vehicles, we had the electric energy used. And from that one, you can calculate MPGEs or kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer consumption. And this is true for each and every vehicle in your fleet. Also, the EV charging report, as mentioned earlier, you will see where the charging process uh, took place exactly with addresses, how much the state of charge changed over the process, how, was, uh, how much electricity was uh, charged into the battery, and how the consumption between the two charging process looked like. And side, of course, you can generate all kinds of reports, just like you might have used it earlier in, in the MyTutup system. You can use this information for just displaying the information, you can generate reports based on that one. And there is also the option to use real-time notification. So in this example here, a vehicle is got back to the depot with a battery charge of 12%, it's time to charge. Or another uh, example would be that uh, in, in our Canadian office, we do have limited number of chargers available for, for the employees. So it's always, always nice to know if a charger is getting free. So we did implement a rule which, which gets triggers whenever a vehicle arrives to close to 100% charge, and the driver gets notified automatically that please move your vehicle in order to free up a charging station for, for the next colleague there as well. We also have the option to help you make sure that your delivery fleet is, is ready to go in the morning. We do have real-time charging notifications where you can set your, your charging time horizon. So for example, from every night until seven o'clock in the morning, I would like to make sure that all of my my fleet are charged up correctly and properly, and we will monitor this charging process for you. And when there is something uh, that requires your interaction, you will get a notification. So you can always make sure that your fleet is ready to go in the morning when it's needed. This is the EV charging alerts. This is a snapshot from, from the function that I just mentioned to you. Here you will see the current state of charge. Here you will see the estimated battery charge, how it will uh, be at the end of the, of the time horizon and the current charging rate. So as you will see, we do have the green category. When the vehicle is charging properly, there's nothing to do. It's in the green one. And wherever there is a need for interaction, 
we will raise an alert and then your colleagues can jump in there. So what are the future development ideas there or what are we working on currently? We are working on a, a, a big data project about the EV range prediction. As you saw in this presentation, currently we show you the battery state of charge of your vehicles. And for some EV models, we can also show you the remaining range based on the vehicle's own estimation. But most of the time, the information of state of charge is good to compare between the different EVs from the same model. But if you'd like to compare different EVs, it's better to have the exact range calculated there. So we are, we are utilizing machine learning and big data to generate real drive-based EV models for each make and model that we have in the system. So we can give you maybe a better EV range prediction than it is currently on, on the dash of the vehicle as well. We also work on a solution that helps you calculating your EV charging cost based on the different time of use and different uh, EV charging locations for that one. And we also think about an, uh, our solution that will let you know that will help you with your EV infrastructure planning. So let you know where your EVs are parked over the night, which would be the interesting locations to, to consider for, for EV charging points as well. Since we're talking about charging, I would also wanted to mention this EV battery degradation tool. You might have seen this blog post that's linked in the presentation. And we analyzed in the last few days, we collected data from many, many electric vehicles uh, you know, in our database. It was in this current example, it was more than 6,000. And we checked over the years how the battery state of health uh, was changing. And we had some, some interesting findings at the end. Of course, all the basics that, that are well known, like you would need active battery cooling of your batteries to, to get a longer battery longevity. But there are some other trick questions as well, like the usage of, of fast charging versus the standard AC charging, or is it better in, in the US where you have 110 volts or in, the, in Europe where you have 240? These are some nice insights there. And we do have this tool available. So if you're thinking about calculating how the life of your EV batteries will look like over the few years in a few models, please take a look at it. Okay, so, so Tamas, one of the first questions here is when transitioning to EV, what is the number one thing to focus on when trying to manage range? It really depends on, on the use case. I would say first question or the first factor would be would be TCO for for our fleet customers. So it has to make sense, make sense financially. Okay, fantastic. And also just to allude to the, the farm drop case there, they've concentrated on driving events and speeding and acceleration in particular, which has improved their range by 27% across the fleet. So there's a good use case example to, to answer that question too. Next question, do, do Geotab offer support when selecting a charging partner or power company? I can take that one, yes. Yeah. So in terms of charging partners, uh, there, there are a couple that we're working with, but also actually resellers themselves, such as Level Telematics, they're working with various partners to, to deliver the, the full concept of the EV uh, solution. So I would encourage all companies looking at this to speak to their reseller and they can obviously guide them down um, the path that they need. Next question is, battery state of health is causing significant issues with residual value of EV. How can Geotab help here? I think here, the last few slides are actually the one to, to jump back here. So as mentioned, I would recommend here, please take a look at this, uh, this, uh, this blog post that we published. This could be point there. And as I mentioned, we're also working on getting the battery state of health information directly out of current electric vehicles as well. So we already cover a few of them. It wasn't part of our standard uh, EV data points, but it will be part of it. So we already have some vehicles that we have this out of the box. And for the others, we can also calculate battery capacity based on the electricity that was uh, that was charged over the given time period so on a longer run you can also compare your battery capacity over the long run so at the end of the day you will get insights about your battery and your state of health with the telematic system thanks thomas uh the next question is instead of procurement cost is it possible to consider leasing cost so so on that point within the the EVSA, you can put in whatever it, in terms of procurement costs, whether you lease, whether you purchase the vehicle, um, whether it's a HP, you can put that cost in there. So uh, yeah, absolutely, it doesn't. It's not necessarily um, a purchase cost when procuring a vehicle. 
you can consider other options and that, that can be put into the solution when working out uh, the various costs. The next question is, do you offer personalised consultancy on top of the EBSA report? If fleet managers need support to review the data, answer additional questions they might have. The answer to that is, um, so e each reseller will have a partner account manager, which is my role within Geotab. Um, absolutely, Geotab can offer support with the reseller to answer those questions that fleet managers uh, may have. Calculation EV charging costs. Can you provide more details? Yeah, sure. So happy to reach out to any of us after this presentation about, about more details. But here basically we are talking about uh, some, some different reporting capabilities there. So we do have a completely flexible reporting engine that you can use to build any kind of reports that you would like to. And this EV charging cost would be a good example for, for that one. So you can just enter all kinds of combinations for different charging costs that, that you have. So for different time slots, for different locations. And the system will, based on the charging monitoring that we have in place, it will let you know exactly how much each charging process did cost. Thanks, Tamas. Uh, and the next question is, can you implement charging stations into the map in the future? Yes, that's also possible. We don't have it currently, but uh, yes, we do have. We do offer map add-in integrations where an additional layer can be added to the map. So yes, we do have actually uh, multiple projects on on the pipeline in this topic. Okay. Uh, next question: Could you share the list of Geotab supported EVs? You mentioned a list of 50 vehicle types. So is that list available? It's absolutely available and public. So we're going to include the link to the presentation that we're going to send out after this. And it's also to point out, so someone, someone has also added, I meant Geotab supported EVs. So um, with any vehicle that comes onto the market, what, what Geotab will do is go to that vehicle and reverse engineer. Um, by doing that, we know how to connect to the vehicle. Uh, we know what data is available and we can continue that process as we move forward. So. Yes, we've, we've um, the new technology that's coming out, the new EVs that will come onto the market, and Geotab will always go out to those vehicles in the first instance to reverse engineers and work with resellers or customers to make sure that we know, A, how, how best to install, and also um, what data we can collect that from that vehicle um, to put into the system. Is the EBSA eligible to create report for ele electric commercial vehicles? Yes, it is. That's our third category there. So apart from passenger vehicles and SUVs and crossovers, we also have light commercial vehicles. Fantastic. Okay, so I think that is all the questions. Uh, if I've missed any, um, then we will come back to the, the whole group and give the answers on those. But um, again, thank you very much for your time today. Apologies for the internet issues at the start of the presentation. Uh, I hope you got all you wanted out of this. And uh, thanks again for coming along.